heard a clicking sound. There were three clicks, and I'm sure okay. you could hear it. And um, that was me clicking one of those long lighters, you know, like a foot long or 10 inch long lighter, trying to get it to okay. fire up. And I was killing a tick. And what had wow. happened was a tick um, was on my laptop, and then he crawled across the laptop. And then he crawled up onto my, my coffee mug. And I'm like, I don't want to, He was going to go over the top and get to my coffee. I'm like, I don't want a tick in my coffee. And so I'm like, I need to burn this thing. And I, I kind of want... Well, at one point I was holding a tick. And then I, I realized I got to, like, you know, kill it. Because I've got to I've got to make this film. I didn't want to want to let it run loose. So anyways, um, I was killing the tick of addiction right when, right when you were talking with Sean. It, 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 it's it's I don't know what it means, uh, Titus, but I think that maybe something happened. Maybe something happened today with uh, with Scott, you know, in that moment, and maybe something happened with Lonzo. I just pray that it did. Um, I'm open Amen. to that happening, Amen. you know, because because it's 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 not just poetic. It's not just coincidence. And the tick was right. the tick was literally crawling up this man's knee. This man is on, and this man's got a beard. You'll see it in the video. Uh, on my coffee mug, he was crawling right up the knee. And he, he was on, you know, he was figuratively on this man. And it's, it's again, it's like an echo of God's fingerprint and all this. And, and uh, yeah. it's, it's just so interesting. Like, I'm at a point yeah. where, um, you know, I don't go and see things that aren't there. But I'm, I'm uh, humble enough to admit that I'm seeing things that certainly are there. It's obvious. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's a good way. You know, what better way to like illustrate what addiction, what sinful addiction it's is? It's a tick. It's a blood sucking tick. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Sorry to interrupt you. But addiction doesn't kill you, you know, right away, but it, it'll suck the life out of you slowly. <laughs> and I mean, that's, that's just the way the nature of all sinful addictions is just like ticks a parasite to just weigh you down slowly take the the life out of you over a long period of time a dragonfly is an honorable insect but buddy i do not have trouble killing i'll i'll take the ticks and throw them in the microwave and i'll, I'll watch them burn up and it does not bother my conscience <laughs> you know I, I i love god's animals even the insects but i don't know something yeah. about that tick it doesn't bother me yeah yeah i i i do the same thing i burn them up or i smash them do you have an Amish microwave, Titus? Uh, no. <laughs> I have a wood cook stove, but I have an oven. And, uh, well, then you uh, then you have an Amish microwave. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and it's it's hard doing ministry because you come under the microscope. And, like, yeah. so I've realized that, okay, we need to build the house of prayer, but we have these volunteers coming, and we cook for the volunteers. And so, um, you know, before all the volunteers came, I had a little tiny wood cook stove on my porch, which you can see that cook stove in the first video, video on Peter. Sure, yeah. But with all the volunteers, that's too small to, you know, it's too small to cook on, and so I needed basically like, like a summer kitchen where the stove is outside of the house, the cook stove is outside of the house. We, it can get heat, it can heat up over there, but it won't like make the house super hot, and so. I decided to take some time away from working towards the house of prayer and just work on building the porch and a, a summer kitchen. And so some people have seen that, oh, Titus is, uh, you know, using this, uh, or, you know, he, he, he's building this, these porches and he's building this summer kitchen. And, oh, so he must be using the GoFundMe money uh, to build these porches on his house and, you know, uh, they're, they're speculating that, um, you know, I'm just doing this for me in my house, you know. And the reality is, is that um, when people came in September, it was starting to cool off, and we didn't necessarily have to have a summer kitchen at that point. But now we are approaching warmer weather, and there is a necessity to try to um, be a little, you know, be a little more prepared to cook in such a way that it won't actually up my house too much um, and so you know it's it, it's it's challenging for me to to have people you know um uh, which i don't read all the comments but stephanie will show me some of them and people will say oh you know 
Titus is using the GoFundMe to buy the land, and he's using the GoFundMe money to pay off his dad for the land, and he's using the GoFundMe money to, uh, you know, build this porch, and, you know, um, and all of the above is untrue. Um, the truth is, is that the money that people donated in the GoFundMe is reserved for the house of prayer, for the building materials, to pay people um, that we need, that we'll pay to do the excavation or the concrete or whatever it may be. And then, um, which we do have plenty donated, designated towards um, the house of prayer itself. And so we have been transparent and told people that if they would like to designate their donation that they already gave towards the house of prayer, if they want to designate that towards the land, then that's fine, they can. Um, and so we had a private loan towards this land and so it'll be an interest-free loan and so we don't have we have the land is in in my name we have the deed um and we're getting ready for the paperwork to be drawn up to give the final payment and so we're excited about it and uh um yeah it's but it, it's pray you know for those of, of you out there that are praying pray for me because it, it is stressful when you're getting falsely accused on a regular basis. Right. And, and, and it takes, and, and it's not so much that being falsely accused really saps the energy out of me, but explaining it to everybody <laughs> it, it is what takes a lot of time and energy, you know. And, you know, there's individuals who have asked me, Titus, what do you need? You know, like, what specifically can I give towards? And one individual had, had asked me that question, and I was like, well, you know, I'd like to put some porches on either side of my trailer here, and if you want to donate specifically towards those posts, here is the lumber yard. Uh, you can just give your money directly to the lumber yard. So um, that's what the individual did, and those those posts have nothing to do at all with the GoFundMe. Um, and so... I mean, I've made assumptions myself about people or what they're doing, and so, um, you know, I guess I can expect that people will continue to make some more assumptions, but I am thankful that Aaron is giving me a little bit of time here to explain, um, you know, what's happening here and kind of set the record straight. Absolutely. But, um, and kind of going back to the addiction and the tick that you were talking about, um, so... I think that Aaron would, would appreciate um, having this story to be shared, and it's kind of an interesting story. So, it, Titus, if you can speak up, it, it, it more is better, louder is better. Okay, is that better now? Yeah. Okay, so uh, Aaron was helping me up on the roof, and we were putting up rafters, and uh, basically we're doing a, a pole bar barn structure over top of my trailer, and so... Um, I was down on the ground and Aaron was like, Hey, um, can you get my, one of my sweet teas out of the truck and throw it up here? And so I told Aaron, I was like, well, you know, I like the, the sugar in it and the caffeine in it is just not good for you. I said, I'd rather, you know, send up water to you. And so one of the other volunteers, Robert, he's like, Oh sure, I'll, I'll get it. And so he threw it up once and it fell back down and, and Aaron was not able to catch it. And so I prayed and I said, uh, that it that like they would be unable to throw it and it be caught in the air. Yeah, you and you so said like, this out like, loud. It, it was yeah, it, I said it, it was, out loud. Yeah, no yeah, you, you let it be known. I said out loud. You you basically said um, if if it doesn't if, if there's three throws and three misses, that means God is trying to tell you not to drink the tea and He wants you to drink water. Yes. That's, yeah, that's what I said. And so they tried three times, and the third time, it came down and it hit a nail or something, and it like burst open. Yep. Um, kind of poetic. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and then I went into the house and I got a glass jar with um, some rainwater, and I threw it up to uh, Brother Aaron, and he caught it um, very easily. Yeah. And so, like, I just, there's little things like that that, like, happen a lot here. And it yep. encourages, when you see small prayers answered and in, in God intervening in the small things, then it gives us courage that in the other areas of our life that he's going to intervene and he's going to answer our prayers. 
Absolutely. And then I, uh, I went, uh, from that point on, I went and pretty much didn't drink much of the water. <laughs> you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. <laughs> so one thing about Aaron, and, and uh, some of you may already know this, but he's very blunt and very direct. And that's one reason why I get along with him so well. That's not true, Titus. Just kidding. Just kidding. See, I joke. And see, there we go again. Man, what I just said wasn't true. And I'm joking, but I, sh I, I need to break that because, you know, we need to remain truthful in all ways, you know? Well, there there's definitely ways that we can joke that's wholesome. Um, yes. And like, like, for instance, you had a cup of coffee um, on on my porch table and you're like hey titus is this your coffee and we laughed about it and because we both knew the truth no, no it's not mine um but then later i was eating some dates like dried dates and you were like hey titus how do you like those sausages you're eating and so like on the surface we would think oh there's nothing wrong with that or you know he's just joking but if we joke around children then they may believe what we're saying that's right uh, and then when they find out the truth then they may feel like we're not credible. Yes. And so kind of along the same lines as Santa Claus, you know, if if parents tell their children about Santa Claus, the children believe it, then later they get older, they realize Santa Claus is not real. Like in order to be credible, you always need to be uh, saying what you mean and mean what you say, and you've got to just be completely accurate in what you're saying. Um, and so... That's something that actually Stephanie helps us with because sometimes we get to joking around. She's like, well, um, Aaron or um, Bill or whoever, you know, like, did you just, what you just said, is that accurate? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, all of us have little habits that, you know, or like sometimes somebody will say, oh, my gosh, and they don't think about it, but gosh is a derivative, derivative of God, and so it's actually like taking God's name in vain, but because it's a cultural thing that we've grown up in, we don't recognize it as something that's, um, you know, wrong. Or like you'll hear, hear somebody say, holy cow. Well, there are no holy cows. Um, you know, Jesus is the Lamb of God, and he was sacrificed. Um, but, you know, now, today, there are no holy cows. These are subtle mockings of God that Satan uses for yes. his purposes. And, and you, yes. you can say, well, I didn't mean it that way, or it's innocuous. Well, guess what? I mean, I, I realize I need to break those habits because it's not better. It's not a best practice. And it's uh, when you go and recognize that and make the, the effort to break that, God's going to bless it. And definitely. Yeah, and like one time I was shooting horses, and uh, I was over at Stephen Hayes, and, and he had a friend over. And the friend made a comment like, something about oh that freaking horse or, or something and then the um this individual was like um titus does, does that like offend you and or you know i said well it doesn't really matter what i think or what you know what my opinion is i, I said that's what jesus said that every idle word which men shall speak they shall give account in the day of judgment and jesus also said let your yay be nay and your nay be nay for whatsoever is more of these cometh of evil. Yep, isn't that right? So, yeah. Uh, you know, they knew Peter when he denied Jesus. They knew that he was, uh, you know, they knew who he was because of his speech. And they're like, well, isn't he one of the disciples? And he denied it. And then he swore in order that they would think that he was not a disciple, you know. So God's true disciples will be known to be a follower of Jesus by their speech. And thankfully, Peter later in his life became bold, and later he had an opportunity to deny Christ, but instead of denying him, he said he was crucified, and he said, it'd be too great an honor to be crucified like my Lord. Let me be crucified upside down. Yeah, and that's something. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're at 58 minutes, and uh, I'm not complaining, okay. but this is just wonderful. Yeah, well, it's God's timing is perfect. You know, it's um, he had a reason. And another issue was is that because of this no contact order, Stephanie can't be here to take the videos. Um, and when the children are in her care, so half the time they're with Jeff, 
so the time that they're with Jeff, Stephanie can be here and can do the videos. So she asked one of our volunteers, hey, can you be there to do the video? And one of my volunteers said, no, he couldn't do it. And so um, so this is so perfect that, um, like, normally we would try to have some kind of a video to teach God's Word or to, um, you know, some kind of a, of, a, of a Sabbath video to teach God's Word. Um, and we would normally be doing it as we speak, and someone would be videoing it, and we'd be out in nature, you know, um, but um, since that wasn't possible, God had another option. And for Sean to be able to publicly share his testimony with the world, to me that's super exciting because people are going to hear his testimony and they're going to they're be like, wow, um, you know, I need freedom from addiction too. Um, and they're going to pray and say, Father in heaven, please um, kill this addiction, this tick of addiction in my life. And uh, they're gonna they're gonna see their addictions go up in flames, and they're gonna see the power of God to keep him clean and on a straight and narrow path. Yes. Well, I've been Titus. I've been um, working on a script for a video. I I, I told you um, that I had to, there was something I had to do, and I kept it vague. So you okay. you probably. You and Stephanie probably knew I was going to make a video, but I didn't tell you what I was doing um, specifically because I wanted to be able to say, like, you know, Titus is not having me do this. Titus doesn't really know what I'm doing. I think he has an idea. So I was going to shoot a video today called Is Titus a Cult Leader Part 1? And I still may. Um, I don't know if I need to do it now. Um, I don't know. I might still do it today or another day. Part one was going to be like an intro as to what it's like to be a volunteer at Titus's for, you know, maybe a week and the, what goes on and how things work and what's expected of you. Um, and then part two was going to be, you know, bringing up the accusations and the, uh, you know, the attacks and the division and, and, and you know, hashing that out. And, and it's a little bit intimidating because... Um, it, well, for starters, I, I don't know how to edit yet. Like, I don't know what I'm doing on YouTube so much. You know, that would have been my four. This is going to be my 400th video. This one right now is oh, my wow. 400. <laughs> hey, what's the significance, the biblical significance of 400? Do you know? I know it's 40 times 10. Well, I mean, 100 would be considered like completeness. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, uh, then you four know, parts of a whole. So it's completeness, completeness. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Because four yeah. is also, yeah. it's like four parts of your, there's four chambers in your heart. And it, what I, I interrupted you, so forgive me. You, I asked you. Go ahead. Well, you know, and also, you know, it, it's significant because, like, Sean is complete in Christ. He's set free. So, mm -hmm. like, of course, we know that God's not done working in Sean's life, but there's like, there's a completeness, there's a wholeness in Sean's life now. Uh, and so, like, it, I feel like it's significant that, this, you know, this is your 400th video. Um, and it, you know, we see completeness. It's shining the light on the completeness of Christ's work in Sean's life. Yes. Well, I was saying I don't really know what I'm doing. I know how to create content, and it's rough. But I don't know how to edit yet, which is ironic because, you know, I've, I've cranked out 400 videos and I'm like on day 81. Um, day, day 81. Most of the videos, just to clarify, most of the videos is older content that I've had in my laptop or in storage for like, you know, some of it 15 years. And I've always wanted to, wow. you know, make a YouTube channel. So like January 21st or so of 2024, I created um, the name Beyond Category and started uploading. And so I'm, I'm like, you know, 81 days or so past that. And so, uh, yeah, anyway, um, I, I don't know yet how to do anything except in one take because I don't know. I, I need to sit down and learn how to edit and get good at that. But I've just been taking the easy way out. I'm just, I just film everything I take. And it's, it's like good and bad. <laughs> so, anyway. Wow. Yeah. Well, I... You had told Stephanie and I to pray about it, that you had something you were planning to do. And, like, in that moment, I knew exactly what you were planning to do. Yeah, I, I love was very it. Happy. I, was, I was very happy to hear that. Um, and, 
but yeah, I mean, you can honestly say that I didn't put you up to it. Like I didn't ask you, Hey, would you be willing to do this? Um, that was just something the Lord laid on your heart to do. That's right. And, uh, you know, and the good news is, is that because you don't know what you're doing, you're going to go to God for help and he's going to give you what you need. Yes. Uh, he'll give you the words. He'll give you what you need. And, um, uh, I would encourage you that when you do it, um, the, you know, is Titus Morris a court, cult, cult leader that you would either provide the link to, uh, so people can actually see the documents or I guess you don't have the paper copies to scan it in, but either way, just that way that people can see what Jeff has actually um, drawn up, you know? Yes. I think, I think if, um, if that, um, if those documents go out, um, so to speak, to the world, I think that might make him rethink his approach because it's like, well, how, if he, if, if, if Titus Morris is a cult leader, then why is Jeffrey praying that, you know, in one of your video, in one of your videos from October, when I'm in the room with him, why is he praying that that church wouldn't be divided? Like he was part of the cult. Like, is, is he, you know, did he come out of the cult? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, that's, he's, he's not telling the truth. You know, it, it, he knows it's not a cult. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. But but I'm not trying yeah. to badmouth Jeffrey. Uh, these things are true. What I'm saying is true. What he's saying in that regard is not true. And I'm not going to cover it up. I'm just going to talk about it, and that's okay. Yeah, I mean, we're being transparent. And yes. the purpose of, of this is not to destroy Jeff or his reputation. Right. Um, but, but what we do... Our intent here is people have questions. They're like, what's going on? Like, there's no more children there. You know, and it, it, number one, it'll answer their questions. Um, and, like, we have been merciful to him because, like, uh, over a month ago, Stephanie texted him and said, you know, if you'll drop the legal stuff, I will take down all the paperwork, all the legal documents that I posted. I'll shut down the GoFundMe um, if you'll just drop the legal battle. And yeah, you know, if, if, and she told Jeff's attorney, if I can have sole custody, then, um, Jeff, I would, I would, Jeff could have supervised visitation with them. Uh, and, uh, of course they weren't interested in that agreement at all. And so in the text message exchange, Stephanie had said that, um, you know, Jeff, if you will agree to dropping the legal paperwork, you know, then of course I'll take the go find me down I'll I'll take you know what I posted down and um, then she also said you know we have not done a vi YouTube video explaining the situation you know what's going on can we wrap this um, up I, I'm I'm running sure. out of battery and it's gonna shut off and it's okay. gonna overheat so yeah, that's fine. yeah, yeah. No problem. yeah. just at some yeah. point maybe two minutes or less okay yeah yeah so we had told Jeff that um, in the text message that, you know, we weren't planning on doing a video to explain anything at that point, but that if he kept on with this legal battle that we would, we would kind of have to put out a video. Well, I guess we wrapped it up. The phone call died. Um, that's interesting. I wonder why it died. I'm going to call him back just to see before I end it, just to see if Hello, he'll... this is Titus. And Henson Creek School of Country. That's Living. interesting. I can't take your call right now, but if you'll leave a message, I'll do my best to call you back. If the voicemail is full and you can't leave a message. To huh. Hey. Hey, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. It cut off. You know. Yeah, that's fine. Anyway. Yep. Uh -huh. Um. Maybe that was yeah, a good I'm, place to break it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it must be. Uh, I'm just, I'm just amazed at how God's timing is so perfect, and how your schedule, Sean's schedule, my schedule, it all lined up. I'm becoming less amazed by all of this, and it's just become the miraculous is becoming subtly t typical to me. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, and I don't want to discount Amen. that. I don't want to sound arrogant or whatever, but. You know, it's kind of like if you really do believe and you have faith in God, then whenever you see it, 
and I'm preaching the Titus here, so boy, I feel I feel silly saying this in a way, but because I don't think that's what you were trying to say. But um, no, it's just becoming typical down there. I see I see Satan attacking, and he's showing his face, which he does not do. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he doesn't exist. Well, I've not directly seen his face, but I've seen his fingertips, in a, in a sense, right? And um, God doesn't show himself to us directly, uh, not now. Okay, not on this earth, not on this plane, but man, he's moving down there at Henson Creek. I've seen it, and um, to, I've seen it today on this phone call with Sean and you. So yes, yes. And and, and I, like I said, it's like I'm I'm touched by it, but I'm becoming less surprised by it because it's <laughs> it's kind of typical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so awesome. It's so and awesome. To illustrate to illustrate, like you know, um, when the child when the son says, "Daddy, I'm hungry. Can I please?" have an apple is he surprised when his father says oh yeah i'll buy you an apple yeah no he's not surprised he's yeah. seen that happen over many times yeah you know he's thankful for it but he's not surprised he expects his father to do that because that's who his father is his father is the provider yes okay well god bless you titus i, I love you you're, uh, I love you too. you're such an awesome brother in Christ and um, you know without Jesus using you and without you being the righteous man you are and, and making the choices that you made you know we wouldn't be having this conversation right now but I'm just yeah. so thankful that you are you know I keep saying the prayers of a righteous man availeth much and your prayers are righteous I've seen it with Sean I've seen it in between me and you and my son and, and in many other I need to go and document all these things I've seen you know, because it's like they're floating around in my in my in my my memory. They're not on paper. And uh, anyway, that's that's going to be a future video because I've seen so much so far. It's like I said, it's becoming a little bit typical. But I, I'm thankful for your friendship. I'm thankful to be a part of this in some small way. Mm, I'm likewise. I'm very grateful. Very grateful. Um, you know, the Lord definitely laid it on your heart to come out this way and. Um, I'm just grateful that we can all grow together to be um, the men that he wants us to be. Yes. All right. Well, I'll let you go, Brother Aaron, and um, I'll look forward to talking to you soon. And uh, so, yep. Thanks, Titus. Hey, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right.